Hi there and welcome to Learn Excel with Ramon. In today's lesson, I'm going to show you how to build a simple Pareto chart. Now, I will let you do some research on your own on the Pareto principle, but in short, the Pareto principle tells us that we are concerned with the critical few instead of the trivial many. In other words, what are the few things that contributed the most to a certain outcome? Lots of different applications. I'm just going to use one example here uh, so that I can show you how to actually build this graph properly using Excel alone. No specific packages, no macros, just Excel. So let's get started. The data that I have here comes from the website worldpopulationreview.com and I just simply have a alphabetical list of the provinces in Canada and territories with their 2019 population number. So you can see starting Alberta all the way down to Yukon in alphabetical order. So to build the Pareto graph, the first thing that we need is to calculate the individual contributions of each province or territory to the total overall Canada's population. So I'm just going to simply use a equal sign here. So equals to this cell, which is B2, Alberta's population, and I'm going to divide that number by my total, 37.3 and change million. So I just wanted to find out what is Alberta's individual contribution in percentages. Now, because I wanted to keep this B16 cell fixed, I don't want that to change on any uh, calculation that I do from now on. I'm going to click right in the middle there between the B and the 16, and I'm going to hit F4. And you see the dollar sign showing up before the B and before the number 16, because again, I want to fix that value. I don't want that to float with my functions. So if I hit enter, I get the individual in percentage, the individual contribution of Alberta. I have already set up the cells in percentages. If I simply drag it down, I will get every single other province or territory individual contributions in percentage. So obviously this sums up to 100%. Okay, so far so good, very easy. The next step is to order this entire table with all of this information by column B. Because remember, the Pareto chart goes from largest to smallest value. I need to show that descending uh, aspect of the information. So I can focus on the few or the critical few versus the trivial many. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select this entire block of information because although this is in alphabetical uh, order here, I need the column B to be order, and I need it to carry over the province and also the individual contribution as I order this. So simply select this block of information. You do not need to pick up the headings. Go to data, sort. I want to sort column B. And the order is largest to smallest. There you go. Same data reorder in a way that I can see the largest population order down to the smallest. And then you can see that obviously my individual contributions also shift around because, again, I'm just moving things around based on column B. Now what we have to do is to calculate the cumulative line. So a simple but properly done Pareto chart has a cumulative line because that's a key piece of information in a Pareto analysis. So the way of doing this is very simple. The first one is the number itself. So Ontario starts here at 38.7%. The second one, which is the combination of Quebec and Ontario, it's going to be equal Quebec individual contribution, which is 22.6%, plus the previous number, which is Ontario's 38.7%. 
so that accumulates to 61.3. If you simply select the two first individual contributions here, you can see at the bottom of your screen here that the sum is 61.3, which is exactly what I have here. Now that I have this, I can drag it down and as I add a new province or a new territory, I will have that cumulative effect on the percentage. And I need that for my Pareto chart. So, province list, province population order from largest to smallest with my cumulative line. I don't need the individual percentages in this case, and I'll show you why. How do I go about building this graph? Well, let's select the area or the data that we wanted to be plotted. I want to select all of the provinces and I'm going to hit control on my keyboard and hold it because I'm going to skip a set of data here. So I need to specifically select only the data that I want to plot on the graph. So I'm holding my control key on the keyboard and I'm going to move over and select all of the information about the population number. I'm going to skip that individual data set and select the cumulative data set, just like that. Once I have this selected, go to insert. I'm going to pick this uh, column chart, but uh, once again, as I showed in another video, I'm going to go to more column charts, go up, to recommend the charts and if you look at the second one it's the one that show me the columns or the bars with the cumulative line so I'm gonna pick that one and then I got my Pareto chart that shows Ontario as the largest all the way down to um, the territories with very little data there, but it shows me from highest to smallest or lowest ordered with the cumulative line. So we can clean this up a little bit. Provide a chart of Canadian provinces and territories I can get rid of this legend here because I don't really need that so I just select and delete it and again I can change the axis scale here be a, a bit cleaner I'm going to show in thousands and I'm also going to make this columns a bit thicker by reducing the gap width. And that is your power chart. As you can see, and if you think about the concept, if I kind of draw a line around that 80%, and you can see on the table here as well, basically we're saying that Ontario, Quebec, British Columbia, three out of 13 provinces are responsible for almost 75% of the entire Canadian population. That's the, that 80-20 rule that it's not perfectly 80-20 in this case. But what we're saying here is that the first three provinces, Ontario, Quebec, and British Columbia, alone are responsible for almost 75% of the entire Canadian population. So that's the Pareto chart. That's how you do it in Excel. I talked a little bit about the concept as well. I hope you've learned something here today. And I hope to see you next time.